In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw a map in the style of Christopher Tolkien's Middle Earth map. This iconic fantasy map was included in the very first Lord of the Rings books, published back in 1954. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop role-playing games and fantasy maps. Before we get to our map drawing today, I want to give a quick thank you to my sponsor for this video, my good friends at Nerdarchy. Nerdarchy ran a Kickstarter very successfully for a book called Out of the Box Encounters a few months back, and they are currently taking pre-orders for that book. It's a big old book full of awesome, ready-to-go encounters for your D&D 5th edition game, full color art and maps and all kinds of good stuff. So go check it out and pre-order so you can support these awesome creative guys. There's a link down in the video description. Now, this amazing and classic fantasy map. I'm sure that many of you heard a few weeks ago, Christopher Tolkien, the son of J.R.R. Tolkien, passed away. He really acted as a steward of much of his father's work, editing much of it that never was able to be published before and bringing it to light so that we could all enjoy it. Now, I have to admit, I actually didn't know that he was also a cartographer. I always assumed when I saw this map, the Tolkien Middle Earth map, that it was J.R.R. Tolkien who drew it. After all, J.R.R. Tolkien did draw the original maps for The Hobbit. But for his Lord of the Rings series, J.R.R. Tolkien entrusted the task to his son, Christopher. And what an amazing map it is. So today we're going to kind of break down the most important elements of this style of map. And I will be mimicking that style while I draw a section from my own world, this map of Inshar. I think it's a fitting tribute to Christopher Tolkien and the amazing contributions he made in this realm of fantasy. So if you feel led, you can pull out a sheet of paper yourself and draw one of your own maps in Christopher Tolkien's style. Let's get to it. So for this video, I am going to be drawing this section of my Inshar map, roughly. So here we go. I'm starting the coastline here using, I think, my number five Pigma Micron. Pressing pretty hard, trying to get a good bold line for the coastline. You can see that on Tolkien's map, this initial coastline is pretty thick. And the uh, following lines become a little bit thinner. After drawing the entire coastline, we then go in and we make two thinner lines radiating out from the coastline into the seas. Uh, the first one is going to be pretty close to my coastline, and I'm really trying to follow every contour of my coastline. I'm not used to doing it this way. I usually kind of make a broken and kind of jagged line around the edge, uh, but I'm doing the best I can here, and I think it turned out pretty good. After we do that first pass through the whole coastline, we go back and do a second one a little bit further out this time. I have seen some of the published versions of the Middle Earth map that have these lines continuing out into the seas almost infinitely, uh, which you'll kind of see me do with the lakes in a little bit. Now for our next step, we're going to be doing lakes and rivers. Now you can see there's a whole lot of rivers here and they're really you know, varying degrees of thickness. Like this one here is really thick and then you've got over here pretty thin and jagged. Uh, but I'm gonna keep mine pretty thin overall. I will be making some parts thicker. With the lakes, or I guess in this case they're inland seas, you notice they're very much like a topographical top-down view. Whereas these mountains right next to them are much more of a looking at it from the side view or an isometric view, uh, which can kind of mess with the eye a little bit, uh, but that's what we're going to be doing.
All right, next up, let's talk a little bit about mountains on this map here. So first of all, the shape of the mountains. Now it's not all that different from the way I normally draw mountains, but there are a few differences. I would say there's a little more variety. There's definitely some more very steep peaks. You know, you get things like this over here and we're getting really, really steep and pointy with those peaks. But there is a lot of variety and there are you know, gonna be some rounder peaks too, as well as some steep ones. Overall, they are quite tightly layered. So we're gonna see lots of mountains directly behind other mountains. And uh, you also get some other interesting shapes like these right here. Uh, sort of these hilly things that come out from the side. So usually they're found more on the sides of mountains like right here. So you'll see some things like that kind of that are just they're almost like walls and they usually have a little bit of diagonal hatching like that. Another big hallmark of this style are lines that go out horizontally quite a bit from these peaks. So we get lines that kind of stretch out quite a ways there. Go out to some of these mountains over here. You can definitely see what I mean over here. It even kind of curls up uh, these lines like right there. If we go over here, right here. So that's a little word on the shape of the mountains as I am drawing my mountains here. In just a little bit, we'll talk about the style of shading as well. For the mountain shading, it looks from a distance like it's pretty much solid black. But if you look really closely at Christopher Tolkien's map, you can see that uh, it, it's kind of scribbly. Um, there's definitely some diagonal hatching at times, uh, but the darkest parts are a little bit scribbly. So I'm trying to mimic that. I am you know, shading them in with my black pen, a pretty thick one here, a number eight, and uh, but not being too concerned about making it totally black, kind of leaving some little white space here and there as well. In this style, we are going to be shading the left side of the mountains and overall they're pretty heavily shaded. I would say probably about two thirds of the space of each peak is shaded. It's really just that, that right hand slope that is going to be left white with, for a little highlight. All right, and now one of the parts I have been dreading, the forests. Um, so in Christopher Tolkien's map, they're extremely tightly packed together. Uh, they're generally in pretty nice rows, uh, pretty uniform. And uh, there's kind of a mixture of rounded trees and pointy trees uh, with little stems coming on the bottom edge of any given forest, or I guess little trunks. At times, they seem to be almost in continuous rows across where I can kind of just keep this little bubbly line going. Uh, but at other times they do seem a bit more individualized. Anyway, it was not a hard process, but it was a slow one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up here so we can get through it. At this point, I realized I think I needed a few more hills, uh, A, to kind of fill in more of the blank space, and B, because I just didn't really have very many sections of straight up hills. So 
I did two different styles here. I did kind of the one that I showed off with the mountains in this northern region. And then a little bit further south, I did some more small rounded ones that I found in other parts of the Middle Earth map. Next up, we've got settlements. Now, there's quite a wide variety of settlements. You have, you know, the Tower of Isengard that is actually represented with a tower and a few other things like that. But a lot of the settlements are just little squares. Still, I did find some little huts, so that's what I'm doing down in that southern region there. Uh, in the middle of my forest, I forgot there's an elven settlement, so I represented that with a tower here. I wish I had left some space for it, but oh well, I'm putting it in anyway. Down here, I'm putting the White Gates of Marinth, represented by Big White Gates, one of my major cities. And then I'm also putting kind of an X marks the spot sort of thing here, which you will find at places on the Middle Earth map. This is really great for a uh, site of a battle or something like that. And now that we have those locations, it's time to label them. I've been looking forward to this part because of this beautiful, bold red that Tolkien used on the Middle Earth map. So I'm going to be doing the best I can with the red pens I can find around my house. I wish I had a fine liner pen. I think that would be really good. But I've got a Papermate flare here and a ballpoint pen that I'm using. And I'm generally going for all caps in the uh, kind of bigger regions and then using uh, just capitalizing the first letter only for some of the settlements and smaller areas. I'm not trying to copy Tolkien's handwriting exactly because he has much better handwriting than I do and I just can't do it. But I am um, copying some things like little arrows like you see right here. Uh, sometimes he just has those. I'm also um, not worrying about making my text all level. It's often slanted at various angles. Honestly, on the Middle Earth map, text is just kind of crammed wherever you can fit it. And um, I even had to put some text across my forest for that elven settlement. And honestly, that didn't turn out too good. I would have preferred to kind of save some space for that, but oh well. So we're pretty close to the end here, but uh, a couple little things I forgot. I did realize I do want to put a swamp somewhere on this map. And so Tolkien just kind of has these little tufts like you see me doing right here. Very simple. And another thing that I realized I wanted were roads. So in Tolkien style, we've got just these dotted lines here. So I'm using one of my thicker Pigma Microns, my graphic pen, and just dotting in a few roads. Not making roads everywhere, going crazy, but just a few here or there. All right, so there's a lot more I could do here. Uh, possibly I'll fill in a lot more detail at another time. I kind of like to leave some blank space and leave myself some options as I am world building and running games. But um, yeah, this was a really good exercise trying a new style. Um, I would love it if some of you tried drawing a map in Christopher Tolkien's Middle Earth style as well. And if you do, you should uh, come on over to our Discord server and share it with the mapping community over there on the Maps channel. Before we go, I want to give a huge thank you to the WASD20 patrons. Patrons are people who support this channel on a monthly basis. They are the lifeblood of the channel here. And if you like my content and you want to join with them in support of my work, please check it out over at patreon.com slash WASD20. There's also some pretty cool rewards like weekly live map drawing streams with me. Thank you all for joining me here. Make sure you like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.